I had this one from Paul Joseph Watson. This one looked kind of interesting. It was the mystery is solved, and it looks like somebody got in trouble for filming a bunch of hoes or some shit. I don't know. I gotta watch the thing to see actually. The mystery about. is finally being solved. Have you seen videos like this being posted on social media? These kind of social clips media. of scantily clad young women. This is seriously ridiculous. You you are out here walking around dressed like this. This is why I say, like, come on, you dads out there. You gotta be marrying off your daughters before they turn into this shit. Scantily clad young women walking around UK cities like Manchester and Liverpool on the night out. Have been going viral, mainly on TikTok, for years. Even at one stage igniting a culture war debate about why women were dressing so immodestly. As if they hadn't already been dressing like this on a night out for 30 yeah. years. But largely absent from the conversation was one crucial question. Who's the weirdo behind the camera? Well, ladies and gentlemen, they got him. Beat down his door. Right. You got a license. Okay, so you're being arrested on suspicion of harassment and voyeurism. Okay. Harassment and voyeurism. They beat this dude's door down because he was filming a couple of hoes. Where are we going now? Uh, we're going to a police station, probably Central Park in Manchester. Oh. What? No, Manchester. So who is he? Where are we going now? A 27-year-old man from Bradford. Name withheld. From Bradford. Interesting. Very interesting. The BBC reports that such films had gained millions of views and attracted misogynistic comments, which led to a police inquiry. But they failed to disclose the gen... It attracted misogynistic comments? And so that warrants an investig... This is crazy. This is crazy. So just because other people from around the world left comments, now he's got to be investigated for them, like, walking around in public like this. This is... Dude, the UK, it's over, man. But then again, it's the UK. So since its inception, it's been pretty much over. General ...profile of those who were making such misogynistic comments, which you can kind of get an idea of when you look at the accounts of those who were liking the videos on Facebook. All right. What is this ambience music? What, the, what is going on? Uh, oh, shit! Abdullah. Gulfam Ahmad. Salem. I can't even pronounce that. Hussein Safot. I, I can't pronounce these names. Oh, shit, boys. I think I've seen a Muhammad. Mm, some kind of pattern here. I think if you watched the original videos, the clues were definitely there. The camp perv wasn't arrested Dude, this looks dangerous. for filming in public, which is legal. He was farming the engagement of his loyal fan base to sell them illegal content behind a paywall. And Greater Manchester Police said as well as the publicly viewed videos, officers also uncovered more content behind a paywall, including suspected non-consensual nudity. GMP said that while filming in public is legal, this filming crosses the line into offences like upskirting, stalking or harassment. Fascinating, isn't it, how those who were accused of rioting were named, face doxxed and publicly shamed by the media within days. But 27-year-old Bradford man gets to keep his anonymity. Police are now deploying <laughs> in force across central Manchester. Does it really count as upskirt if, it, if like, your skirt's already up your damn taco? Anyways night to try to catch more pervs. Officers are being deployed every Friday and Saturday across Manchester hotspots on the lookout for predatory behaviour. How we arrived at this situation, one which has even prompted public figures like Tony Cruz to leave major European cities for fear of their daughter's safety, remains a total mystery. Never before have I felt as unsafe as I do now. When I walk down the street, I'm increasingly being leered at. I'm increasingly having... I'm increasingly being followed, like I'm going around the souks of Morocco. And it's not, visibly to me anyway, people who were born and bred here. It <laughs> you know, the way she did that reminded me of, uh, there was an incident where uh, I was at like a flea market 
I don't know if you guys know what a flea market is. It's like a swap meet. It's like where everybody kind of has like their table set out and they're like, they're just selling shit. It's like giant garage sales, like all clumped together, whatever. And uh, I was out there with my mom and we were selling some stuff. And my dad went to go get something to drink or like something like that for us. And there was this Mexican dude that walked up and he was, he was doing that to my mom. He was like, hey, and he kept doing this with his hands. And I was like, what the, f like, what is this dude doing? And, but he wouldn't, he wasn't saying like, hey, ma'am or anything. He just kept going. And my, my, my mom turned around and he was like, it looked like he was like mad that she wasn't responding or whatever. I remember I just put my hand out. I was like, hey, dude. I was like, cool it with that shit. I was like, she ain't a fucking dog. I was like, don't treat her like that. If you got something to say, talk like a fucking human. And then he just looked at me and he was like, he was like, uh, you know, por qué? Or I don't know what he was saying. I was just like, shut the fuck up, bitch. It isn't. Uh, like, uh, you know, it's very difficult because we're not allowed to talk about it because, oh my gosh, you know, that's not, that breaks taboo. Oh, you know, you're a racist if you say this. I'm sorry. A lot of women going about their daily business feel that their safety is being directly threatened by people who are coming from different cultures. And this needs to be discussed because I've had enough. All my other female friends have had enough. When I put this stuff online, the number of comments online from other women saying they've had enough. There's clearly a crisis of masculinity in in the West. Normal, healthy masculinity is yeah. being publicly shamed, denigrated, labelled toxic masculinity. While our governments simultaneously import vast numbers of young men, some of whom have views towards women which are actually toxic. Meanwhile, our environment is I do by agree, all yeah. kinds of crap that's turning men more feminine. Oestrogenic chemicals in plastics, bisphenol A, testosterone levels have been declining oh, year shit. on year. Sperm counts are decreasing exponentially. Oh they no, is this an ad? They want you weak. They want you low T. So what can you do to fight back? Black Forest Supplements, ah! Testosterone, and Tom Cat Alley. The sponsor of today's video. If you want improved muscle, strength, and libido, all in one pill. More energy, especially in the mornings. Improved stamina. Less stress and fatigue. Better focus and concentration. Check out Black Forest's Max Pure. Look, you take one pill, that's what you'll look like. Maybe I'll be able to grow a full beard. Uh, you know what works out pretty good, dudes? Just eating some beef. If you don't want to do that, just get like some zinc. That's all you need. All right, let's continue the ad. Pretty Turkesterone and Tonka Ali. Overall, it helps you become the best and most masculine version of yourself. And get this, as part of their Black Friday sale, Black Forest Supplements are offering a 50% off site-wide sale. I'm sorry, I think you mean African American Friday? That's absolutely huge. That means if you buy one bottle of Turkesterone with Tonka Ali, you get one more absolutely free. Who could argue with that? There's no better time to stock up because this stuff isn't cheap because it actually works. And even if you find it's not for you, there's a 30-day money-back guarantee. But that Black Friday deal won't stick around for long. So check out my unique link in the description box down below or go direct to blackforestsupplements.com Black Watson. Should the identity of the mysterious 27 year old man from Bradford Where are we going now? ever be publicly revealed I get the hunch that it might exacerbate concerns about the impact mass migration is having on the UK just today we learned that net migration to the UK in the year ending June 2023 was revised up to a jaw dropping 906,000 nearly a million net migration in a single year 160 these numbers are crazy dude that, that is so many people just immediately coming in. Like, you, you drive to, like, a town of, like, let's say 30, 40, 50,000 people. You're like, this is a whole town. Imagine a town of 100,000 people. And then timesing that by almost 10. Like, that's how, that's, that's just massive cities worth of people coming. This is crazy. 66,000 more than previously thought. Whoops, we just misplaced 166,000 people. A rise so <laughs> steep Oops. that for the latest year, they're celebrating the fact that net migration dropped by 20% to just 728,000. Wow, only 728,000 people coming in in a single year. What a oh. minuscule number. This is crazy, man. But that's also... Why I was talking about beforehand, like when that, that dude was making that one video talking about, um, 
like how Islam is like on the decline and it's failing and like the Muslims aren't recruiting as many people anymore and all this other stuff. And I'm like, but you, uh, it's like, if somehow you think this is a victory or that you've got a way out, you're insane. These people have more wives than you do. They have more children than you do. And they're coming into your country at this point, probably by the millions. So you are going to literally be replaced because you are not having children. You at, at most, at most, you can only have you can only have one wife. And if you do get that one wife, that's a rarity within itself. And you might have maybe a couple of children, maybe. Meanwhile, Muhammad has got probably three to four wives and like 10 to 15 children. Like there's nothing that you can do against that. You lost by default. And you're more interested in hookup culture and you'll, uh, you know, you raise your daughters. Well, as long as she wears protection, that's all that matters. Not only that, if you do manage to get pregnant, you spawn camp your own child. It's, it's, it's crazy. Like you're, you're, you're losing on a multi-tier basis. You're not getting married. You're not having children. And when you do get pregnant, you fetus delete us. You spawn camp your own youngling. It's crazy. You, you, it's like you're just losing by default. To put that into perspective, in the last 12 months to June 2024, Britain welcomed a new non-British migrant every 30 seconds. To a minute, every minute. And they're celebrating this supposed massive percentage drop. Of the 1.2 million people who came to live in the UK in that time, around 86%, 1 million were non-EU nationals. Indian, 240,000. Nigerian, 120,000. Pakistani, 101,000. Hey, Chinese! Chinese 78,000. Zimbabwean, 36,000. In the space of one single single year alone. We've even learned that 86% of all migration into Britain today is coming from outside of Europe. Much of it is low skill, low wage, culturally incompatible forms of migration. People were very- If I went there, I think I would be considered uh, low, low skill. Different values, beliefs, traditions, and religions, this is not only making us poor, it's undermining our social fabric. All this after we supposedly voted to take back control of our borders under Brexit. We're adding to our population every year in terms of non-EU migrants, a city almost the size of Birmingham. The UK's second largest city every year. I've just done yeah, the calculations crazy numbers. on that estimate now. We, we are expected to have 71 million people in this country by mid-26, that's one million more than the ONS has said, yeah. and we're looking at towards 80 million by that 2036 figures. Mm. That's 10 million in 10 years. Yeah. At this level of growth, it's unsustainable for this country, and we should be shocked by this. We should be really worried too. And leftists still express amazement and wonder at why housing is so unaffordable. Why our roads are jammed. Why public services are crumbling. Why the NHS is stretched to breaking point. Why violent crime and the type of crimes that were once uncommon in the UK are now commonplace. Yeah, that's the scary part too, is everything that comes along with that. It's not just people. It's not just overcrowding. It's not just you possibly losing your job to somebody else, but it's also like the sheer wave of crime that comes from it. Uh, most Arab nations have high death rates and child kidnapping, Gamza. Well, you survived. Why councils can't even collect your bins more than once every three weeks? Even as they're charging more money every year. And they're still claiming long-term immigration will be around 300,000. Even as they revise up the already huge numbers every single time. Don't listen to the lies that are being told that it's fallen by 20% year on year because they revised the previous year upwards by 170,000. If you want a party that gives you mass immigration, if you want a party that makes sure you can't get a GP appointment, you can't get your kid into the local school, getting on the housing ladder becomes impossible, that your roads are congested and that the whole country gets poorer, vote Conservative or have a Labour government 
that probably will be even worse. We also learned that the UK government spent a whopping 5.38 billion of taxpayer money on the asylum system alone. A rise of 36% oh on the previous gosh. year. Four times the amount they just saved by slashing winter fuel payments for pensioners. <laughs> Damn, Sorry, dude. Peter, it's going to be a long, cold winter. We've got new priorities now. Oh, it's going to be nice and cosy at the local migrant hotel. Not so warm in Peter's bungalow. You got Gotta love diversity. Damn, dude, UK cooked. Game over. If I can walk, mate. The only people that can save you in the streets now are the chavs with their Burberry caps.